important to consider that in the round, I think. Absolutely. So, David, you want to in as well, yeah? Yes, thank you. I just wanted to emphasise the point that uh, uh, was touched on about um, the VAT threshold. It's a very, very big, uh, significant issue in, in our sector, and the BRIA uh, uh, only had a couple of uh, businesses that were below that threshold took part, so it was pro probably not giving a, a correct uh, feedback on this. Um, there's lots of businesses in our sector that deliberately trade below the th or up to the VAT threshold. It, it, sounds, it sounds perverse, I know, but it's, it's a reality because, because of the rules on VAT and because of the very high rate of VAT we have in the UK, um, there's a massive cliff edge when you get to 85,000. You've suddenly got to charge 20% more for, for, the same, for your same... Um, Service, so that's that's so a lot of businesses deliberately trade up to that or, or or under that, and actually sort of close sometimes in parts of the year in order to not breach the VAT threshold. It's very perverse. I've spent far too much of my time on, on tre treasury talking to the UK Treasury, trying to explain to them how perverse it is, and that they ought to either have tra in transitional measures or raise the threshold or something to to allow because that would open up more turnover in tourism and, and actually capture probably more VAT overall. But, you know, the Treasury is the Treasury, and they would say no. But the, the fact is that um, that is a big issue, so it needs to be taken into account in this, that if, if the visitor levy on its own would push a business through the VAT threshold, how is that going to be managed, and is that business going to be somehow compensated for, uh, or is it going to be a total negative for that business?